Hey everyone, welcome to this latest Azure infrastructure update. And this is kind of the mid-June, so last two weeks. As always, uh, if this is useful, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, over the last two weeks, I've created a number of new videos. The first was actually, I took Azure Fundamentals exam, the AZ900. Really just to find out what's in the exam, what the level was. And then I create this one hour video, just whiteboarding out kind of core concepts that were covered in the exam. I created an overview video of the Azure Kubernetes service, going into what are containers, what is Kubernetes, and then what is AKS. And then something I just posted a couple of days ago was a deep dive video on Azure AD app registration. So we covered app registrations, enterprise apps, service principles, and really how they kind of all fit together. In terms of what's new, so on the Azure Compute side, we now have the M, the NV, V3, and V4 supported on Azure dedicated hosts. So if we remember, Azure dedicated host enables me to buy essentially a compute node dedicated to me. Only my VMs run on that. And I buy that dedicated host of a certain SKU. There's, for example, D SKUs, E SKUs, and then based on the SKU of the dedicated host, I can run X number of the appropriate virtual machine. So if I buy a D SKU dedicated host, I can run D series VMs on it up until the limit of the number of virtual CPUs supported. So now there are variants that support M and the NV series. Additionally, there's the new DD and ED uh, V4 series virtual machines. These use the new Intel Xeon Platinum 8272CL processors. That's the Cascade Lake. So I have essentially new options for my virtual machines. On the networking side, it's really focused on Azure Firewall. So firstly, we now have forced tunneling support. This enables us to take any traffic that maybe would have gone to the internet, and now I can route it through to an on-premises firewall, or I could route it to another network virtual appliance um, on my network. Now, there are some caveats to the configuration. It does split out the management traffic from the customer traffic. Obviously, I can't send the management traffic down to some on-prem firewall. Azure will stop working. So it actually does split those out for us. SQL, fully qualified domain name filtering, is now an ability. So be that SQL PaaS, be it SQL Managed Instance, SQL Data Warehouse, Synapse, or SQL running in an IaaS VM, I can now filter that based on the fully qualified domain name of that SQL host. So I can really control which SQL instances it can talk to, not just based on port 1433. And now Azure Firewall sports up to 250 public IPs instead of 100. On the Azure storage side, something pretty cool. There is now an Azure File Share soft delete capability. Now this is not about files and folders. Um, we already have snapshots in Azure files that take a current copy of the file share, and I can manage those snapshots with Azure Backup when it takes the snapshots. This is about what if I deleted the entire file share? So if we just quickly take a look at this, so if we go to the portal, I'm looking at a certain storage account. Now on this storage account now, if I go and look, under files I now have soft delete. You can see I've turned on the soft delete capability and I have a retention period in this case of seven days. What that means is now, if I look at my file shares, well, I've got my dog images file share, super important to me, but through some either accident or maybe something malicious, well, that gets deleted. So if I go ahead, type in the name, I don't know how I accidentally typed in the name, whatever, it gets deleted. Like, oh, I'm, I'm really bummed out. I need that data back. So what we can now do is you can see, hey, I want to show my deleted shares. And now I can see that dog images. It shows as deleted. Now, you have to wait a little while. It actually takes a while to delete on the back end. So we may get an error if I try and do it too quickly. But I can say, hey, undelete. It actually failed. Notice it's saying share is being deleted. Um, sort of try again. 
And so I'll give it another go. It's already pretty quick. And there we go. So I've now undeleted it. I can now go into the share and I can now actually go and see my data. I can say, hey, look, download. I must see this picture. It's now loading out. And this is kind of my newest puppy. There's Eddie um, sitting on a tray. So thank goodness I did not lose that super critical data in my environment. So that is the soft delete capability. We have that X number of days, we can actually go and get our file shares back. Next sort of miscellaneous. So Azure Site Recovery now has proximity placement group support. So Azure Site Recovery lets me replicate virtual machines. So I can say, hey, take this virtual machine in East US and I'll replicate it from within the guest OS over to West US or wherever I pick, I, I can control that replication. Now what it's saying is proximity placement groups let me put things as close as possible together in Azure. So I've got these five virtual machines, maybe they're different series, and I want them as close as possible. That's what proximity placement groups do. Azure will put them as close as possible in terms of latency. Now I can say, hey, this VM that I'm replicating, if it replicates over that target region, if there is a failover, put it in this proximity placement group. So I can have lots of VMs that go to the same proximity placement group, they'd be close together. The shared image gallery, place where I can create my images and then make them available. I can now capture a VM directly. I don't have to go and capture a particular managed disk or an image. I can say, hey, this virtual machine, if it's Windows, I could generalize it. I want to capture that. I can copy image versions now between shared image galleries. So imagine I had like a test dev gallery. I get my new version of the image, I test it, make sure it's good. Now I can copy that image version over to production where it would then be utilized. And I can use a customer managed key for the server side encryption. Previously it was only kind of the, the system managed key. Now I can actually pick the key I want to use to actually do that encryption. Microsoft Teams, well, the media optimization feature is now available for Windows Virtual Desktop. And this is huge when I think about voice and video because that's, that's very, very sensitive to any kind of latency. So what this means is, ordinarily, we could imagine, well, there's my machine and kind of there's me and I'm running the Windows Virtual Desktop client on that machine. Now the actual desktop itself, well that's running up in Azure and fundamentally it's got a desktop it's running on a VM that could be Windows 10 dedicated to me, could be Windows 10 multi-session, it could be a Windows Server. But essentially up there, there is a session for me and that is running the Teams client. Now I'm trying to talk to someone else. So over here, there's someone else on their machine and they're running the Teams client. Now ordinarily what would happen is the communication would go from here to here and then obviously my connection is kind of that RDP traffic encapsulated in for HTTPS, but essentially it's RDP, so I've got this bounce. So everything is going via here, it's gonna add latency. It's really not gonna be a great experience. So kind of red stands for oh, sad conversation. With the media optimization, the voice and video will actually now go via the Windows Virtual Desktop client. So the Teams client is still running up in the VM, but it's gonna redirect that kind of web RTC for the voice and the video, the Windows Virtual Desktop client will handle it. If you ever looked at things like remote FX for graphics, we used to have in, still doing remote desktop services, it's a similar idea of making the local client do that work. So now I'm actually gonna get a great experience and I'll have a great voice and video conversation. So that's now available and I can kind of go and test that out. There's actually a new method also now for Azure Key Vault. So Azure Key Vault, when I think about, hey, I've got keys I want, 
generally I want to generate those in an on-premises uh, HSM and then get them into the Azure Key Vault. But how do I do that securely? I don't want to transport it in plain text. So what we can actually now do is if I think, if I go back over here for a second, if I think about I've got my on-prem HSM where I want to generate my key. And then I can think about, well, up here is Azure and I've got kind of the Azure Key Vault where I want to get that key to. What we now do as part of the process is I'm going to create a KEK. -E so that is a key exchange key. And what I'm going to do is I generate that key exchange key within Azure Key Vault. I'm going to export out the public key exchange key. I then import that as a process into the on-premises HSM. From here, it will now take that key that it generated and it will encrypt it with that public key encryption key. And I can take that, and you kind of guessed it, and now I can import it into Azure Key Vault, never plain text, it has the private key, it can decrypt it, no one else can. So it's kind of a, a new cool way we can actually get keys from on-prem uh, into Azure. That's kind of the summary. I hope this was useful. Again, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, until next time, uh, take care of yourselves.